Mark from Vortec Pro. We're back on the 467 620 horsepower engine build. This is video number 21. Today we're going to get into the terminology of the port because we're going to get get to the porting of these cylinder heads for this engine. And most of you understand this stuff, but some people don't, so we're going to go through it just the same. So, what we have here is a cutaway view of the head unmodified with a 20650 valve, intake valve I should say, and after we put the 2190 intake valve in it. So, this is a side view obviously, the port, which would, you know, this is the same thing here and here. What we have is the roof of the port, the port floor, the very important short turn, this is the bowl dimension right here, from here to here, and of course the valve seat. The throat right at the, right below the valve seat. Okay. So I guess the first thing I should mention is look real closely of the unmodified port, how the short turn comes straight down after the turn. Okay? Right here. Right here. When we put a 2190 valve in this head, focus, this short turn gets shaped like this. It starts to come out in this direction and the back side of the bowl will have this this protrusion or hump as I like to call it. Okay. This right here, this shape right here is very important and we're going to go in here and we're going to show you what we're trying to achieve after we explain this. This port here in general will usually when it's flow tested, flow past 500 lift. What I mean by that is, let's say it flows 270 at 500 lift, and we lift this valve to 600 lift, it flows 275. Okay, th these are just general flow numbers, just for examples. What I mean is it picks up 5 CFM going from 500 lift to 600 lift. Okay? After this valve, this bigger intake valve is machined and set up in this head, let's say that this thing flows 275 at 500 lift. It's very possible that this port will lose flow at 550 lift because of this right here, the shape of the short turn. So let's say it flows 275 at 500 lift and it flows 268 at 550 lift. And that is directly because of this shape right here. The way this short turn is shaped compared to how this short turn is shaped. Hopefully, hopefully you can make sense of that. I'm trying my best. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify this port and change the shape of the port so this will keep flowing past 500 lift. And we showed in our earlier videos how putting a 2190 valve in a production head with no porting can actually lose flow at the higher lifts. This is what we're talking about. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw this shape again showing what it should look like when we're done to give you a, a good idea of what we're talking about here. Okay. So this again was our factory, this black dotted line represented the factory short turn before we modified it. Roughly, crudely, this is where we laid the short turn back and reprofiled it by grinding on it. 
when we're porting the head, we'll be able to show you pictures of us doing this. But this is more the shape that we're after, which will help this head continue to carry flow past 500 lift. Okay, I want to talk about the low lift flow and how putting this 2190 intake valve will raise your low lift flow if it's done correctly. Okay, if you look closely, you can see how this, there's a little hump right here from putting a bigger valve in. Now let's go over here to the factory head as cast with the 206 valve. You notice how this is straight right here? This just comes straight down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get ahead and I'm going to show you what it looks like after it's been machined for a 2190 intake valve. Okay, we have the factory head here with the 20650 valve job. This is the seat, the 45. Notice how this drops straight down, straight off the seat. Now, here's the head that we put the 2190 intake valve in. Here's our 45, here's our 60. You see this band right here? That right there, when it's shaped correctly, raises the low lift flow dramatically. And we'll show you as we port the head the shape that it needs to be. As we port the head, you'll hear us talk about tilting the short turn of course laying the short turn back in the width of the short turn which the width would be as as the floor of the port makes its turn these corners right here would be you know, let me do it this way these corners of the port would be widened and we'd also would tilt the floor of the port the direction we'd want it to go to increase the flow which we'll demonstrate as we port the head now in our previous videos, we talked about how this would be the bad port right here because as the air comes out of the port, it enters against the cylinder wall. You could see the direction of the port. This would be considered the good port. As you can see, as the air comes through the port, it enters to the center of the cylinder. Now, where these heads get thin is right up in here. right in this area. You have to be careful here. And on the bad port, they get thin right in here as you're widening the floor of the short turn. Okay, this is a cutaway of an 049 oval port head. This is the bad port with the factory 20650 valve job. This line represents roughly what the shape of this short turn is going to look like after we reshape it. As you can see how thin it can get in this, this area, mainly here. And you'll use either, you can use a sonic checker, a lot of people do that. I mean, we, we have a sonic checker that we use, but I've ported so many of these. I mean, you can hear that the metal change tone is you're grinding on it when it starts getting thin. And when that happens, then you'll bring in the sonic checker and start looking at it real close. While we're looking at the cutout, the side cutout view of this bad port on an 049 casting, let's also take a look at this area right here. This is fairly straight. And I don't earlier in the video I talked about this hump through here, how we wanted this to have a venturi shape. See how this is flat? When we get done putting a bigger valve in it, this will protrude like this. I'm, I'm exaggerating it, but we're going to have more of that shape here, which raises the low lift flow. Here's a cutaway of the good port, and what we're going to do is we're going to come down here, see where this makes this curve like this? We're going to try to straighten this wall and open up this area. Now keep in mind that this area right here can get thin. So you got, you've got to be listening to the head as you're porting it. You'll hear the tone change as you're grinding on it. We want to give it more room between right here and the guide. 
the bowl will not really get opened up in this area. I don't know if you can see. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. The bowl won't really get opened up in this area, but on each side of the valve guide here and here, it will get widened. And it'll be easier to show you this as we're porting the head. Okay, here's the cutaway of the exhaust port on our 049 head. I think it's important to show you this so you can see what kind of material you have to work with. We'll keep coming back, referring back to this, these cutaways as we port the head to show you the different in, difference in shape. But just for people interested, I mean, you have to be careful on the exhaust too because it, it actually can get thin. Okay, these are the tools I use when I'm porting the heads. I wear safety glasses and sometimes I'll wear a goggles over the top of the safety glasses depending on what part of the head I'm porting on. Always wear the respirator, uh, the sonic checker. We use that occasionally. Uh, quarter inch shanked cartridge roll. Makita die grinder. The Harbor Freight die grinder. The burrs we generally use are an SE4 and SE6 egg shape double cut on a 6 inch shank. We also use an air die grinder in certain in instances and uh, on, the, on the electric die grinders we'll use a rheostat to control the speed and uh, I think that about covers it.